the sky this month with your host, Dave McDonald. Welcome to the sky this month for March 2022. I'm your host, Dave McDonald, and this is a special edition of the sky this month. We are going to be having a little tutorial for our New Hampshire State Astronomy Bowl. But if you're tuning in in another state or something, it's going to be interesting for you as well. We're going to talk about a lot of different things that you see in the sky, but we're going to focus a little on this new New Hampshire State Astronomy Bowl, where we are inviting high school students from around the state to compete at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center on May 14th. That's a Saturday, and that'll be in the evening. And we're going to show you some more uh, details in just a moment. March is a great morning. Uh, it's a great morning month. As we get to the middle of March, the Ides of March, March 15th, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, and don't miss March 20th, Sunday, March 20th, 11.33 a.m., is the vernal equinox. Because you know what that means. The sun is coming north of the equator on its way to the summer solstice, and we're going to be having summer before you know it. It doesn't feel like it outside right now, but uh, it's really going to be exciting as we celebrate the vernal equinox, and that's a great day. It's a Sunday. There's no school get your eggs out and try to balance your eggs on their ends. And I bet on Sunday, March 20th, you're going to be able to do it. I've even had people challenge as to whether they can do it on the narrow end. And I had one student, uh, his name was Kyle, it probably still is Kyle, and uh, he was able to do it on the narrow end. So March 20th, 11.33 a.m., the sun crosses the equator on its way up to the summer solstice, which will be in June. So that's kind of neat. And then also in the morning, we're in March, uh, in the morning you have planets that are awesome. Mercury's kind of leaving the scene. You might be able to catch Mercury at the beginning uh, of March. We're talking about an hour, 45 minutes at least, before the sun rises. So keep an eye on the sunrise time which is changing because our days are getting longer at both ends. And uh, Saturn is now emerging uh, close to the horizon. I'm going to show you at the end of the show where to find Saturn. And then uh, you have already blazing Venus there with Mars right next door to Venus. So uh, the planets rule the morning sky before the sun is up. We're going to tell you a little bit about that and some great uh, questions uh, and answers on the sky. So let's talk a little bit about the New Hampshire Astronomy Bowl. This is some of the basic information. We have all New Hampshire high school students are invited to compete. The competition will be May 14th, 545 to 815 p.m. That's a Saturday at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center in Concord. Uh, ask your science chairperson. We have uh, sent them an email about the competition and uh, they should be able to fill you in on the details and you can email me astromannh at gmail.com and uh, we'll get you as much information uh, as we can. Uh, but again, more information will be heading to your science department chairman. So, uh, next, uh, I want to introduce to you our special guest, uh, Dylan Flanagan. Dylan is the president of the Belmont High School Astronomy Club. So welcome to our show, Dylan. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for taking the time to be here. Of course. I know you have a busy school schedule being a senior. Very busy. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's that way. So uh, let's look at uh, the next slides and, and look at some of the prizes that we are going to be offering for this Astronomy Bowl. What's on the left, Dylan? What do you see there? It's an Orion telescope. And that Orion telescope, it's an eight inch. I have one. It's an amazing telescope. It's worth about $700. It's a great telescope. And we're going to be offering that as one of the prizes. And then you see the Win Arrow 
ACE Academy. The uh, Winero group is offering ACE Academies uh, July 11 and July 18th for a whole week. There's an Aviation Academy and a Drone Academy. That's an option as a prize. And then, Dylan, what do you see over on the far right? $250. And that's going to be, as it kind of indicates, in cash. And right underneath the 250, you see the Eclipse Mobile. It's uh, sponsored by the New Hampshire Total Solar Eclipse Task Force. That's a mouthful. And you have a choice of, with it, it's, it's combined with the $250, if you choose that prize, to get a ride in New Hampshire's Eclipse Mobile. How cool is that? And then uh, next, we just want to be sure to uh, say hello and thank you to the sponsors that we have. Winero, uh, which operates out of Laconia Airport. And then we have the New Hampshire Total Solar Eclipse Task Force. The New Hampshire Astronomical Society is donating that wonderful Orion Telescope and we thank so, so much the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center, uh, where we are going to be hosting the Astronomy Bowl, and that's in Concord. And the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center is very gracious in letting us use their tremendous 40-foot dome planetarium theater for the competition. So we went into the planetarium theater at the Discovery Center, and these photos that you're going to be seeing, the images you're going to be seeing, actually I took with my camera on the planetarium dome. Some of them might be a little fuzzy, and that's just because it's obviously dark. You just have these little pinpoints of light, and so it's kind of hard to hold the camera still. But I think you'll be able to discern what's going on easy enough. All right, so we're going to talk with uh, Dylan as though he was a contestant at the uh, Astronomy Bowl. And uh, so are you ready, Dylan? I am. Okay, we're going to have like six or seven rounds of different types of questions. And one of the first questions would be something like, uh, Dylan, what is this constellation that I am now circling? That appears to be the constellation of Orion. And in fact it is. So you score a point. Nice. And then the next person at the next school next to you, uh, we'll have another question about a constellation. Now, the important thing is you need to know the constellations visible from the northern hemisphere. So it's about 60 or so because uh, obviously uh, we're looking for people who've done some work, some study, because we're giving away, you know, a $700 telescope, $250 in cash. Uh, we, I mean, this is a big deal with big prizes. So Orion may be on the question list. I am going to have nothing to do with the questions. Nobody at Belmont High School is. The staff at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center will exclusively be designing uh, the questions. So uh, you can trust that to be the case. But a another question might be, well, uh, Dylan, what's the name of this star? Well, that's Betelgeuse. And in fact, it is. You score another point. Nice. Is that pretty cool? You got two points already. And so Betelgeuse is, in fact, the name of that star. But then, uh, if we widen the view a little bit here, and you can see Orion here. It's a little fainter, but you see I'm circling Orion here. But I may hand the laser pointer to Dylan and say, Dylan, circle the star Sirius. I believe it's that one right there. I think you've got it. And that is, in fact, the star Sirius. That's pretty cool. Three points for you, Dylan. Wow, I'm winning this one. <laughs> Bring me my telescope. <laughs> you want that telescope I badly. Do. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's pretty neat. So you can see uh, we've got Orion, Sirius. Okay, so now I will ask you a question. Uh, I'm circling this star. It looks like it's got a little bit of an orangish hue to it. But what's the name of this star right here? I believe that's Aldebaran. Good job. And uh, what constellation is Aldebaran in? Taurus. It is. It represents the eye of Taurus the bull. So, uh, very good. Then we may move on to questions where the artwork 
is displayed. And when you see the artwork, you again, once again, there may be a circling going on. And uh, so, Dylan, what's the name of this constellation here that I am circling? I don't know. I think that might be Taurus. <laughs> I, I think it is. And there's that bright star Aldebaran. Now, depending upon what uh, software you might use, what book you might use, artists draw the constellations a little differently, but a bull is a bull is a bull. And then I might ask you, Dylan, with the laser pointer, can you circle the constellation of Pisces? And good job, Dylan. That is the fish. And you would need to know that Pisces was the fish because we're, they're probably not going to say circle the constellation of Pisces the fish. <laughs> They'll just say circle the constellation of Pisces. And if you know they're the fish, pretty easy enough to be able to uh, discern that. So there may be these character artist conceptions uh, that you will see. And if you want, you can go to the McCullough Shepherd Discovery Center any Saturday or Sunday. Go to the 3 o'clock show. That's a Tonight Sky show. And if you let whoever's running the show, and I do myself from time to time, but if you ask whoever's running the show to that, let them know that you are going to be competing in the New Hampshire Astronomy Bowl, uh, they'll be able to maybe do a few things just to clue you in on what the artwork looks like and the stars and different things of, of that nature. Here we have another set of uh, constellations that you need to look at and study. And so looking at this group here, uh, Dylan, can you circle Cancer? The crab. Be this Oops, right there. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> can you circle Cancer? Because Cancer doesn't sound like a crab, but uh, so we won't tell that it's a crab, but circle cancel, and, yeah, and that's the one in the middle. And uh, let me ask you, uh, Dylan, what is the constellation that I am now circling? It's part of the constellation. Well, that would be Leo the lion. It is. It is Leo the lion. So uh, you may be asked to circle a constellation. You may be told uh, or asked what constellation is this one. And then... As we look at the uh, grouping over to the right, Dylan, what constellation are we looking at here? That's Gemini. It is Gemini. And Gemini is the twins, but they won't say Gemini are the twins. But note there are two stars here. And of those two stars, do you know the name of either of them? Those are Castor and Pollux. They are Castor and Pollux. So you may be asked, uh, which one is Castor? So, Dylan, could you point to which one is Castor? That one is Castor. It is. And which one is Pollux? Obviously, and it's this the one is Pollux. <laughs> Obviously, it's the other one. But, uh, yes. So, you need to know uh, the bright 50 stars, okay, that are visible in the Northern Hemisphere, because there are some bright ones in the Southern Hemisphere. We are going to use Southern Hemisphere constellations and stars if we need to do tiebreakers, and it seems like you know everybody's really doing a good job and knows all their northern stuff, then we may, for tie-breaking, need to resort to some southern stars and, and constellations. So this is some artwork that you need to familiarize yourself with, and we're doing very common ones, but there's 88 constellations all together, and 60 or so that throughout the year you're going to see from the Northern Hemisphere in New Hampshire. So those are the key ones to focus in on. But as you look at Leo, Cancer, and Gemini here, another form of question that we could do is using stick figures. So check this out. So up on the planetarium dome, you may see this rather than images. And uh, so there's one over here to the left, Dylan, looks like a coat hanger. which constellation is that one? That's Leo. It is. And you can know, so you, how many, I've lost track of all the points you have. I think about like nine. You, you're getting up there. And I think you're only going to be able to earn seven. In the, yeah. <laughs> you, you I've won really two prizes. <laughs> <laughs> so this coat hanger uh, idea here, this is the like the head of the lion. 
and you can see, and the triangle is like the, the tail of the lion. And in the middle, you see this thing that looks like an upside down Y. Uh, and again, you need to familiar yourself with this uh, from books or uh, software. Uh, that's the stick figure representation of cancer. And then, clearly enough, what are uh, what is this star? It's Castor. It is. And this one? Pollux. Is Pollux. So, with the twins up there as images, that's kind of a big hint. But maybe it's going to be a stick figure up there and not the full image. So, you have to be familiar with the uh, stick figure of the constellations uh, as well. Next on our show, uh, here is a, a star field. And this star field that you're looking at uh, has a W over here. And this W that I'm tracing here, do you know that constellation, Dylan? Yeah. That is Cassiopeia, the queen. And Cassiopeia, uh, the queen, uh, this narrow angle that I'm pointing to points to a fuzzy spot, which is the a special galaxy. Is that the Andromeda galaxy? It is. The very same galaxy that is on your sweatshirt. Ta-da! Yes. And that uh, we, we chose to be the special uh, emblem for our Belmont High School Astronomy Club. It's a little on the fainter side, so it's kind of hard to, to see. But there's very faint lines here. And like this area that I'm pointing out would be the constellation of Perseus, the hero. And down here, you see this one with the three stars. Dylan, can you identify that constellation? It looks like a what with the three stars? Is that triangulum? Or it is. Yeah. That's triangulum. And triangulum is one of the few constellations that really looks like it's supposed to be. It looks like a triangle. <laughs> and uh, so that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. So uh, you have art images to look at. There may be stick figures. There'll be just the star field, so you need to be uh, familiar with also the time of year because we've been looking at constellations from the winter and the spring, but there are summer constellations, obviously, and constellations in the fall. Uh, Andromeda is a, a particular item that does show up in the fall. And then here uh, is a variety of artwork besides things that are on the uh, zodiac, and uh, what animal is this one? That's a giraffe. It is. Yeah. And who knew that there was a giraffe in the sky? But there is, and it's Camopolardus, the, the giraffe in the sky. And then we mentioned uh, Cassiopeia before, and this time of year she's upside down on her throne uh, there. But then did you know uh, over here what this is? Is that the Lynx? It is. That is the Lynx constellation. So, uh, we mentioned uh, Andromeda as a, uh, as a constellation. And uh, some of the things that we're going to be doing is showing some images. And we're going to show images from uh, Messier's ca catalog. There's 110 objects that are numbered. There's actually only 109 objects because there is a duplication. So. Uh, as you look at this image here, and images will be displayed on the planetarium dome, uh, what would you say that is, Dylan? That's the Andromeda galaxy. And it is. That is the Andromeda galaxy. And that is um, M31. And you may or may not be familiar with the numbering system, but that is M for Messier object, number 31 on Charles Messier's list. Uh, and you can name it M31, you could name it as the Andromeda Galaxy. It would be fine. And then, um, here's a relatively famous one, not as famous as the Andromeda Galaxy, but as you look at this image, Dylan, what do you think that one is? Well, that's the Whirlpool Galaxy. It is. And very nice looking. So, those are some ideas. Check out some images of uh, different types of nebula, galaxies. Uh, again, they'll all be from Charles Messier's list. And though there's 109 objects, we will be, I believe the Discovery Center said they'll, they'll be choosing, because uh, this will be one round of questions. Uh, 
more common ones that you might see, perhaps like the Crab Nebula, uh, some nebulas that are more on the common side. Okay, so uh, then uh, planets come into view. Uh, gosh, I have no idea. Dylan, help me out. Oh, I'm, st I'm struggling with this one. Is that Jupiter? It is, in fact. It is, in fact, Jupiter. Now, that's pretty easy, but maybe some people may or may not be familiar with some of the key features on some of the planets. Like on Mars, we have Vallis Marineris, that deep trench. We have Olympus Mons, the uh, highest mountain in our solar system. Uh, and on Jupiter, uh, what's this image piece here that I'm circling? That's the great red spot. Yes, it is. That is the great red spot of Jupiter. Huge, about the size of one and a half planet Earths. And it looks like uh, we're going to be talking about the, the night sky or the morning sky in just a moment. So that wraps up the rounds of the Astronomy Bowl. Dylan, I think you did pretty well. Thank you. Thank I think you. I won all three prizes today. I think you did. I think you, and, and you know what? I don't think you just got a ride in the car. I think you won the car. I think so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, good job. That was a lot Thank of fun. You. It was a great time. And what do you, what do you uh, have to say to the high school students that may be watching the show? Well, I hope to see you all there. It's going to be a great time. Study hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot of fun. And big prizes. And, and, and just, you know, fun getting together with people who you know and are interested in things about astronomy. We hope to be making this an annual event, but this is our, our first effort in a long time to do something uh, like this. So please uh, write astromannh at gmail.com, astromannh at gmail.com, and we'll uh, get you some information. And also check with your science department chairman. And uh, we'll look forward to having some great competition. All right, well, we'll take a look at what's going in the morning in the night sky. Dylan, thank you so much for thank you being so part much. of the show. Hope, hope you had a good time. I had a great time. And uh, enjoy that car. I will. <laughs> I need a new one. <laughs> okay. Hey, let's have a look at this guy. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that time with uh, Dylan as we tried to illustrate to you some of the ways that we're going to go, uh, go about asking questions in the Astronomy Bowl at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center, May 14th. And that will be at 5.45 to 8.15 in the evening. It's a Saturday, so don't forget to register. And so looking in the morning sky, I've chosen uh, March 20th. This is a Sunday, March 20th, because this is the morning of the vernal equinox. Okay, the sun crosses the equator at 11.33 a.m. New Hampshire time. And on that morning, about 45 minutes before the sun comes up, because you can see the sun is getting ready to come up, uh, but three planets are like right there for you to enjoy. Venus blazing at a magnitude negative 4.8 is crazy. And right next door, just to the lower right, is Mars. Binoculars will really be a help. Now, Venus you'll be able to see for quite some time uh, as the sun rises even. And if you want to really you know, test your skills, Try finding Venus at noontime. Don't look directly at the sun. Venus is far enough away from the sun. So if you're looking at Venus, you're okay. So don't look at the sun. But I have taken my astronomy class outside at noontime, and we can see Venus. Uh, it's, it's very possible. But as the sky gets lighter uh, than the dimmer planet, Mars is going to fade away. And Saturn is just kind of making its way up during the month of March above the horizon. So you see you have a very low southeastern horizon here to be able to see Saturn, Venus, and Mars, all three of them together. And I'm just going to mention that right here, Altair, one of the stars, one of the three stars of the summer triangle, is that word summer again. We can be looking forward to that. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the night sky. And it's this just happens to be the same uh, night of March 20th. However, the sky is similar 
uh, throughout the month. The sky changes about four minutes uh, every night from night to night. And uh, definitely one of the things that is very famous that you can see off to the right side of your screen is Orion the Hunter, very prominent in the winter. But March 20th is the first day of spring. So what we're going to do is mention that we have Leo the Lion. The lion is coming in, ushering spring in. You can see the uh, outline of the head of the lion and the underside, because the lion is typically pictured uh, kind of laying down with his front paws and back hind haunches here. And then the tail is the star uh, we know as the Nobla. So Leo the lion, the, we refer to this as the sickle of Leo sometimes, and the brightest star uh, Regulus in the constellation of Leo the lion represents the heart of the lion, and that's Regulus. We'll be talking more about uh, spring constellations next month, and also we're going to have a big update on the James Webb T Space Telescope to what it is doing. Dr. Rick Feinberg will be our guest for our April show, and uh, he knows all things James Webb. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the show. Please register. Check it out. The New Hampshire State Astronomy Bowl. Email me, Dave McDonald, at astromannh at gmail.com. If you have any interest in part your high school student in New Hampshire, you have the opportunity to win a week at aviation camp or drone camp. Thank you, Win Arrow. You have the opportunity to win an 8-inch Dobsonian reflecting telescope, a very serious instrument. Thank you, New Hampshire Astronomical Society. You have an opportunity to win a $250 cash prize and a win and a ride in the uh, Eclipse Mobile. And then uh, we thank so much the McCall Shepherd Discovery Center for uh, hosting the event on May 14th. And that will be 8, excuse me, 5.45 to 8.15 in the evening on that Saturday. But registration closes uh, early on in April, so please, again, email, talk to your science department chairman, study. Hopefully this has been a helpful show to help you do that. And we hope that you, everybody will keep looking up. I'm your host, Dave McDonald.